So today we are going to do a quick troubleshooting of an incoming PSTN call. So a call that is received by a cube will be sent to the Cisco Unified Communications Manager and then will be answered on the Cisco Jabber. Hey guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Amit Singh and uh, I thank you for visiting my channel and watching my videos. I hope you guys are liking this. If you haven't yet subscribed to my channel, please do so and share this information with a lot of people that you think would need help. So let's get quickly started. Okay, so let's start with the testing. So the first call that we would test now is an incoming call all right fellas i think you guys are now a little bit more informed about the cube call configurations and everything so let's get the ball rolling okay so let's also enable few debugs so i will say debug ccsip messages so this would allow you to see the SIP invites and uh, if there are any problems and all these informations and I would also say debug VoIP CC API in out. This would help you to see if there are any codec mismatches and what are the incoming and outgoing dial peers that have been matched. Okay, so let's make some calls. So I'm making my first call so the real DID number that I should dial is, you know, uh, 919472 and then I think it's 4402. And the expected result should be that, you know, the call reaches this uh, Jabber user that ends with 7700. Let's see what happens when I make the call. If we have the right translations in place, and what happens next so I've placed a call now and let's see if there is a call I'm just waiting oh that's good you hear a fast busy all right so let's stop this and let's see what's going on with this call. Why is this incoming call? So I dialed this number from a PSTN mobile, you know, and I tried to reach this number 919472-4402. This is the PSTN number and this is the uh, number that should be translated to 7700 at the end so it should be like plus 1408 triple five um, 7700 you know and then it should work I mean we have we have checked the translation rule was in place right the last time so what happens why is this number not matching all right so let's do show logging and let's see some information. What was it? Why is it not working? So you see that you received an invite for the number 919472 This is the received invite. You know, that means this is an incoming call. And this is received um, on the external interface of this router. And who has sent this invite? So as we know, this is the IP address of the provider. So we have received the uh, invite really from the provider's IP address, okay? And then uh, this is the PSTN number that was dialing this call, you know? And it was sent for this number. That means it should match the extension 7700 at the end, all right? So what happens next after the invite? That's an incoming invite. So if you see here, there is an SDP information. That means the provider is sending 
an early offer for an incoming call with all the information where should the calls media be connected to that's the IP address and then what is the uh, codec that it supports G711 ULAW and then the telephony event 101 all right the next that you see is the cube sends 100 trying and where does it send it sends back to the provider on 10.1.40.11 okay and then you see again that the cube forwards this invite back or not back but the forwards its invite to the CUCM and then if you see here the number is translated the number is translated to plus one four oh eight triple five four four oh two that means that's the wrong translation right it should be translated to plus one four oh eight triple five double seven double zero because we want to call a user with the number double seven double zero and not double four double double four zero two and this is why if you see back that the CUCM will be sending back so first the CUCM sends 100 trying you know it's received um, from the CUCM and then you will see that received 404 not found that means this number was not available to the Cisco Unified Communications Manager database and this is why we heard a fast busy all right and then if you see that the ACK is sent back to the CUCM by the cube and then the cube will send 404 not found to the provider at the same time okay and then you will see that the provider has received sent an ACK as well so this is the received ACK from the provider all right so now let's just check what's wrong with our translation so show run pipe section translation voice translation hyphen rule i think okay good we saw we said that any number that comes in with this with the last four digits anything please translate it to plus one four eight triple five and the last four digits keep it as it is that's why we said one one means keep the matching as it is or the rest as it is okay so that's why this translation rule was matched but the number was incorrect okay so let's create another rule to translate the number correctly so we'll say voice translation hyphen rule 1000 let's just create a static rule rule 2 I will just copy this rule here and we'll just make a couple of changes and here I will statically say match double seven double zero all right or the other way is I will say um, 4402 you know if this is the case then um, triple five keep this as it is right so it will now translate let's now just do a test so we'll do test voice translation hyphen rule 1000 and then the number is 919472 this is a number that is being sent by the provider to the cube to call 7700 oh it still matches 919472442 and then it matches the rule 1 and it doesn't match the rule 2 all right so voice translation hyphen rule 1000 and i will say no rule 2 and i will say 
let's just create a static rule and I will say rule and I'll just copy this again let's make it this time static so I will say double seven double zero that's the number that I'm trying to match and then now uh, if there is anything that matches nine one nine four seven two four four oh two just translate that number to this thing plus one four oh eight triple five double seven zero all right let's test now test voice translation rule 1019.4472.4402 and you see it still matches rule 1 because of the um, longest match criteria because both are one and the same so let's go ahead and just interchange those rules so let's say voice translation hyphen rule 1000 and then I will say uh, so the rule one I will say seven seven zero zero and then here I will say here four four zero two so that's my rule number one okay so let's just remove rule two and then rule one again and then we'll create a rule two so we are just interchanging we are making rule one as rule two and rule two as rule one okay let's test again what happens nine one nine four seven two four four zero two and now you see that the priority is now given to rule one because these two rules have the same same match same match and that's why it was always giving the priority to rule one you know so now after i just interchanged the rule priority you see that um, let me show you the rules again show run pipe section voice translation hyphen rule 1000 you see here I just changed the priority of the rules I didn't change anything else you know and that's how it matches now rule 1 instead of rule 2 and now the call should be rightly translated to 7700 and then it should be reached to the um, Cisco Jabber phone okay so I'm gonna make the call again let's see what happens this time all right and then we still hear a fast busy now what's the problem let's check now let's go ahead and see again the logs so i will say show logging i just go at the end of this uh, message because there are a lot of logs all right and then here you see that we still receive a 404 not found from the Cisco Unified Communications Manager. So basically, I will show you also the invites, you know. So this is the received invite from the provider on this number and then to the cube and then uh, there was an incoming dial peer match and then the outgoing dial peer match and then cube send a 100 trying back to the provider and then we sent an invite back or sorry a sent an invite to the communications manager now with the right number wow 
So at least the translation rule is working now. We have plus one four zero eight triple five double seven double zero, and if we see the user, it has the same number as well. You know, so it has the same number, but still the call is not working, and the CUCM is sending a four zero four not found. Okay. So let's see what is the issue. If there is an issue, how can we resolve it? So let's go to Cisco Unified Communications Manager. And then let's just see what's the problem in the Cisco Unified Communications Manager. Because now we know that Cube is sending it correctly. It's again and again coming from Cisco Unified Communications Manager. So there is definitely a problem with the Cisco Unified Communications Manager. Okay, so let's just check in the cube if the cube is correct or not. If the zip trunk configuration for the cube is correct. All right, so what will happen here is, um, so this is your, let me open maybe, the canvas, that's good. All right. Um, so what will happen here is the cube will send an invite to the CUCM zip trunk, you know, and in the zip trunk, there should be an access provided or should be a CSS on the incoming CSS so that it could either reach the device or it could either match any translation pattern or whatever, you know? So it needs to have access here. So what we should check really is if there is a CSS available on the zip trunk so that it can send the call to that particular device and is it reachable, okay? So let's just see if we see at the incoming CSS, very good. We do not have any CSS being assigned. And if we check the phone or the directory number, um, route plan directory number, there should be a phone number that ends with 7700. And if we have a look, this is in a partition and that's why the call is failing because the zip trunk has no access to this partition, you know, and this is why it was sending back a 404 not found, you know, because it cannot reach that partition. The zip trunk cannot reach that partition and that's why it was sending a 404 not found back to the cube and then cube was sending it back to the provider. All right, so let's create a CSS. And we will give it as a inbound cube CSS. And then we will assign a base partition to this cube CSS. And then we will assign this to the zip trunk the CSS to the zip trunk. All right. And then we make sure that the cube is in full service. Now you see that the status has changed. So that means the cube reset was done. So it says options being not enabled and it will take around one minute to come up. Okay, so now we see that the cube is in full service or the zip trunk is in full service and let's try to attempt another call and this time it should be fine. I think I will, at least I will do clear logging. And then let's just see what happens next. Fingers crossed. This time the call should connect. And voila, 
you see that there is a call and I am able to answer it to answer it and let's just see let's just see All right, so I've disconnected the call and I see that I you saw that I made this um, command so as to check what is the codec that is being used and you see that the codec end to end is used as G711 ULaw. All right, so this is the way that you could check the codec that is being used and then who is the originating uh, who has uh, who is the answering party and who is the or originator and then uh, also you could see the VoIP RTP connections so which are the IP addresses that are involved in the RTP packets you know so these are the local IP addresses and these are the remote IP addresses that were involved so it is a Jabber and then the PSTN um, phone IP address or the service provider IP address, you know. So this way you could confirm that your codec is used correctly and then the RTP connections are fine. And then let's just have a look at the um, call information. So here you see that this is the received invite from the provider and it was received on this interface uh, that's the gig 0 slash 0 slash 1 so when interface on the cube this was sent by the provider that you see in the via header that means the wire header has matched the correct dial peer you know so because we said match the incoming van dial peer on the wire header and it has matched on that you know and that's why the call has been received so it was an early offer here you will see all the informations and then this is the output of wipe cc api in out and here you should see that the incoming dial peer that was matched was 2001 it was matched on the wire header and then the cube sent 100 trying back to the provider and then again there is an outgoing dial peer match so it says outgoing dial peer 1000 that has been matched you know and then once the dial peer was matched then the translation profile was assigned and that's how the number got translated from 91 whatever it was to plus one four oh eight triple five double seven double zero okay it was not before the matching of the dial peer very important uh, the dial peer after matching of the dial peer the number was translated you know you see here the called number okay and then you will see that after the dial peer everything was done then the SIP invite is being sent to the Cisco Unified Communications Manager at the IP address that, that we have mentioned it as a session target 198.18.133.3. All right, I think it's a long session, so I would not uh, include the outgoing dial peer in this testing in this. So we did a little bit of troubleshooting, I think. I hope you guys understood how was it done. So it's really necessary to analyze the log sometimes if you have some fast busy problems and why who sent the error message back or who sent in our case now for example the cucm was sending the message back even though there was the problem on the cube right i mean the first problem was on the cube that the translation rule was not correct but still the cucm was sending okay 404 not found why because cucm was receiving a wrong for wrong directory number right so it's not the problem of the cucm actually it was the problem of the 
cube and then the second problem was on actually actually on the zip trunk because the zip trunk didn't have the css so it couldn't access the directory number to which uh, the cube was trying to reach okay so that's why the next time we assign the css the call went successfully and it was able to reach correctly with the right codec information all right so in our next video we'll talk about our um, outgoing call and we will see and troubleshoot some interesting things and uh, I hope you guys would like it and after this we will be discussing about you know the different ways that LPR could be configured how we could transform these four LPRs into two and then make it compact and really easy to understand so a lot of interesting stuff to come guys you know keep sharing this information let's go all out and uh, learn something more during this time of COVID-19 and make use of this time to make ourselves a better engineer. All right, I thank you everyone for watching my video and uh, do not forget to watch my next video that's coming in, in next week. Until then, thank you, bye-bye, take care.